Uh, my name is Walker Mackinich. I'm a senior endpoint engineer at a law firm. Uh, I manage about a thousand Windows endpoint devices and about 300 or 400 Android and iOS devices, mostly with Intune. When we started moving our workloads from Configuration Manager to, to Intune, one of the first workloads we looked seriously at moving over was Windows updates. And we made a decision in 2019 that it wasn't quite for us, that we weren't quite ready to release that level of control over our updates. When we started moving to cloud native devices last year, we reevaluated that decision and decided that the controls around Windows Update for Business were in a place that we were comfortable with. And quite honestly, I don't think about Apache Tuesday anymore. I really do not think about what what is happening. It it just happens. It applies, and for the most part, it just works. Windows updates is always going to be Windows updates. There's always going to be certain devices that you have to go poke and prod to get to take an update or realize that it's out of disk space again or whatever the solution is. Um, but the the number of incidents where a device didn't get content or couldn't download the hash right or those weird one-off things that happen with configuration manager updates just simply just don't happen anymore. The one workload that we still rely on configuration manager for right now in terms of updating is third-party applications through a third-party vendor. Um, it works with configuration manager. They have a solution in Intune. We're evaluating it. We don't get the granularity of control with how Intune apps are updated as we do with pushing those updates through a, a, a WUSIS package in config now. If someone approached me and said, why reinvent the management wheel? Why move from configuration manager to, to Intune? I would say that, you know, there's, there's different, hmm. you're not, you might not be reinventing the wheel. You might be putting different tires on, right? Like there, there's, there are good reasons across the board why you might want to move to Intune. It might be that it's a, a personal challenge for you that's engaging and fun. It might be that there really truly are things that Intune does better and easier than Configuration Manager ever did. It might be that you don't have to think about those pesky site servers that, that keep throwing weird error codes all the time. Um, it's a lot of reasons. I think as most organizations realize as they move from Configuration Manager to Intune and moving from their old management platforms into something that's now net new, a clean slate, there is a lot of junk, a lot of trash that you have to leave behind. Um, some of the stuff we left behind, we did so by choice, not by necessity. The way that I was able to sell Intune as a a solution for us um, really, really came down to proving one hurdle at a time that there was a solution on the other side. Um, so the, the reporting capability, yes, it's a little clunkier. Yes, it took me a month and a half to figure out how we were going to do it for us. Uh, but once I had that in place, it was it was pretty easy um, to, to sell to, to my bosses that, yeah, this has everything that you used to have. It just looks different and is in a different place. And that's been true for most of the, the Intune stack in terms of management. Most things you can do, some things you have to get more creative than you used to, to solve. Um, but there's yet to be anything that's straight up not possible for us to do within Intune. It's twofold what I'm able to do with the additional time now that I'm not managing a configuration manager environment, um, a, a large one like I used to. Um, able to provide additional functionality for our end users to access corporate resources um, through things like conditional access, um, setting up things like Microsoft Tunnel to gain access to some of our on-prem resources uh, from, from anywhere. And, and these are things that it would have been possible whether or not I was managing configuration manager, but because our team runs so light, there's just not enough hands to do it. So me having the additional time and availability 
to do those things really progresses our business forward. And honestly, it provides a, a new and interesting challenge for me as an individual uh, doing new things and trying things that I otherwise wouldn't have the ability to. We ran a full configuration manager environment for a relatively small uh, a, a, you know, footprint of a thousand or so of workstations. Um, and we still run that today, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we're working on spinning it down and we've scaled down our config man environment significantly from where it was. Uh, we have a distribution point in each of our 12 offices and a, a primary site server in our data center. And uh, so it's not massive, but those 12 uh, distribution points become a little unruly to manage sometimes. And as again, sometimes with, with content management on those, you have to jiggle the handle a bit to get things working again. And it became a lot. And so when we started looking into co-management and moving to Intune, uh, we looked at scaling. We were talking about the cloud, right, with, with Intune. And so we decided why not look at Cloud Management Gateway and managing all our devices through that with Configuration Manager. So when we started our co-management journey, part of that was also to scale down all our on-site distribution points and rely on a Cloud Management Gateway to deliver content. Um, that did happen in conjunction with a network refresh uh, that allowed for for better traffic flow to the cloud from those other offices. Okay. Um, but it's we went from managing thirteen site servers down to two right now. So we have two site servers in our configuration environment. the The amount of care and feeding that that's taken uh, has has dropped dramatically. I hardly ever think of managing our configuration manager infrastructure anymore. It it's, it does kind of manage itself now. We started our co-management journey in 2019, um, and the last application slider got moved over uh, sometime late 2023, and that was a pretty quick jump once the, the application models matured to a point where it's almost one-to-one -to, -one to configuration manager. There's a few things we miss for a few certain apps. Um, and we keep those in config man, but otherwise we've moved all our workloads into Intune for, for Windows management. The word that our security team loves is zero trust devices. And you can't do a zero trust device if it's domain joined, right? Because it has that implicit trust relationship with your domain. That doesn't exist with an Azure or sorry, an Entra ID only joined device. A cloud only device. Uh, so you can really do truly cloud native, um, zero trust devices. And as soon as our security team heard those words, zero trust device, they were all in. There was no more convincing that needed to happen. There was a little pushback from our management. The, some of the reporting capabilities in Intune leave a little bit to be desired. And I think that's still true. Um, Often I was able to point my boss to a, you know, link to a SSRS report in configuration management and say, here, this is the data you need every month. It's not quite as easy to do that in Intune. It takes a little more fiddling to get the data in a way that they want it presented. So all the data is there if you go into graph or if you're able to export it to an, a CSV or some sort of a data set and then import it into a reporting software. But the, the real-time querying of that data and the ability to, to hand those reports off, like I, I can manage the, the raw data, right? Like I can look at a, a CSV and say, that's great, that's all I need. But that's not what my management wants. They want the, the pretty graphs of the donuts and all that stuff to make it look pretty and and understand what what percentages mean and everything so getting the data presented in that format within intune is uh it one of those other new challenges that it presented uh, but once i had that in place it was it was pretty easy um to to sell to to my bosses that yeah this has everything that you used to have it just looks different and is in a different place 
the biggest change to our end users day to day is is something that Intune has enabled us to do, but that our end users would never know is is why, right? They, our end users wouldn't know that Intune's what allowed them to do that. Um, and so so now now we're able to provide almost all our corporate on-premise resources to our end users, whether or not they're connected to our VPN. Um, and with our workforce being relatively remote and relatively geographically diverse, there's many scenarios uh, where I think the, the increase in our help desk calls when users can't access a file share because they forgot to connect the VPN because they don't need to be on our VPN for 90% of their job anymore. Um, as, as, you know, that's maybe a downside, but the fact they don't need to connect the VPN to do 90% of their job has been a huge selling point. Um, and Intune is really what allowed us to do that at the end of the day because it allowed us to manage our devices in a secure way, whether or not they ever connected to our VPN. We moved our Android devices, which is a much smaller footprint for, for our company, over to Intune a lot sooner than our iOS devices. And we chose to go with uh, application management only, so MAM policies only for Android. And that worked really well. Uh, our Android users have been doing that, uh, accessing their mail through Outlook and using MAM only for about three years now. Our security team is totally on board with application management only. Uh, there's been no issues from them whatsoever. We are currently migrating most of our end users from Exchange on-premise to Exchange online. And part of that migration is also moving them from our old mobile device management platform into Intune for management of their iPhone. There's been zero tears shed over the loss of It was clunky. It required an end user password. That's the only thing left in our environment that we couldn't go passwordless with. Uh, now that that is gone, our security team is happy because there's no longer zero days for our servers every every third week, and we can look at rolling out password lists. And our end users seem to be happy because the experience for them is basically the same as what they've been used to.